Hey, it's Dave Lasowski, and this is How to Win with Video. In this episode, I'm joined by an all-star squad of business owners who are total experts in video and marketing, and we tackle a hot topic. What is going to be the state of video in 2021? First up, I'm joined by Chris Bow, otherwise known as Sieves. Sieves is the owner of DNC Media, which is an agency that focuses on bringing businesses and brands new customers online with video marketing. With a background in sales, a love for technology, and a serious talent for making it some incredible looking video, Sieves has built his agency to a point where he's helping his customers get hundreds and hundreds of leads on the regular with video ad campaigns. In our conversation, we talked a lot about one of video's most powerful uses, automation. Here we go. I see video as such a powerful resource that organizations and individuals really are only scratching the surface with. And what I mean by that is the state of business has changed so much in the last 10 to 15 years Wherein, you know, 15 years ago to build a, a million dollar company, let's let's say that, you know, that's a huge milestone for any company to get to seven figures. To build a million dollar company, you needed to have teams, you needed to have people, high payrolls, you needed to build the army almost to get there. Today, you can literally be a solopreneur, one person, build the right system, set up the right automation, and build a seven figure company. I see video as being the most powerful tool to be using within those systems, whether it's to attract new clients, whether it's to onboard clients, whether it's to train people on how to do your processes, procedures, or anything. And I think the more companies really start to understand what they can, how they can truly benefit from this, you know, it could be reducing staff on hand. It could be, you know, like for me, I don't need a salesperson. I use automation for everything. I have, <laughs> I have 50 to 100 messages going out a day where it's like, that's a, a dedicated salesperson's job that I would have to pay 60 to 100 grand a year. I just set up a bot and it's just like, boop, boop, boop. So in go. that setting where you've got, you know, you've basically essentially eliminated the need for a salesperson because you're using video. Like what does that, what form does that take on? You've got a bot. It's, is it programmed to communicate with people already in your network or sure. down people? So like- let's use LinkedIn, for example. Um, I've been doing a lot of LinkedIn over the last year, really dialing in that system, um, partially because I noticed most of the leads that I would get from Instagram or Facebook weren't just as quality. I wasn't being able to get in front of the right decision makers the same way as I could on LinkedIn. So I started focusing a lot on LinkedIn on what with one of my systems and the bots that I do run there, hopefully LinkedIn doesn't watch and ban my account. But basically what I'll do is I'll just pick a niche. So right now I'm looking for partners in the Marine industry. There's a lot of boats and yachts and everything down here in Fort Lauderdale where I live. So what I do is I have a good VBC video business card that we did for one of our clients. I built a list on LinkedIn sales navigator, which took three minutes where I just searched (laughs) C-level executives in the marine industry in, in South Florida. It was over 1,400 connections. I put it into a sequence where each day, I think it reaches out to 10 to 20 different people, and it just sends a message that says, hey, I, do, I'm, I live in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm actually looking for uh, additional partners in the marine industry. Here's a video business card that we just finished for one of our clients. Does this make sense to discuss more? And I just send that. I don't care about the connection. For, I just send it. Yeah. And already in the last week, I've had seven people hit me back, say, hey, actually, I would love to chat. And so I get those leads just coming in now without I still have to sell them. I still got to get on the phone and take them through the process. But But, at least the inbound lead part is kind of automated at this point. Well, that seems to be the part that people struggle with most or or are always asking about. You know, people seem to have a decent enough sales process. Anyone that's actually getting into automation and, and automating their leads process, I'm going to bet on them having a solid enough sales process that when those leads come to them, they're going to convert pretty decent numbers. I mean, how, how well do you feel you're going to be able to convert these people that are coming in? Pretty well. Yeah, um, exactly. I would say, honestly, like 
thirty percent. I think I can close because, yeah. but the the reason being, I've gone through so many sales meetings. I've done so much outreach. Like this system, you know, a lot of people want to go to automation or bots or ads or anything because they're afraid to reach out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're legitimately afraid of the sales process. They're afraid to email someone. They're like, oh God, this person is going to think I'm a weirdo for sending them an email. Guess what? They don't give a shit. Yeah. If they don't, if they don't need your business or your service, they're going to say, who is this? Get out of here. And it's gone. You're off their mind. Meanwhile, you're stewing at night. Like, Oh God, I sent five emails. Like, you know, I, I called thinking. someone and they hung up on me. Like, you know how many times I've been hung up on making cold calls yeah. <laughs> told the F off, you know? Um, yeah. you have to get through that because now I know my messaging. I know what I need to say in these messages. I know what I need to send. I know how to do the follow-up, but that's all happened from practice and practice and practice, you it's, know, and the automation isn't, isn't the answer. That's mm -hmm. just making my life a little bit easier. I've physically done the outreach so many times that, like the 10,000 hours, a hundred percent, man, I've been doing business development since college yeah. you know that's i don't know now 12 14 years i didn't know if you wanted to age yourself right there or not <laughs> i don't give a shit my life's <laughs> awesome <laughs> that is what i love to hear dude dude that seems that's why i love talking with you man um that attitude right there but i wanted to bring something up when you were saying you've gone through it. You've sent these messages. You've done the business development. It got me thinking to actually yesterday when I was listening to a podcast that had Travis Chambers on it. And he was talking about the golden message, the golden messaging about how over he, he's finally figured out what one statement he can say that will get people interested and get people wanting to know more about chamber media. And mm -hmm. he said to back that up, he's like, look, I have, I've only figured this out because of repetition and repetition and repetition and doing all like trying a lot of shit and then figuring it out. You don't just know that right away. So I feel like a mm -hmm. lot of people rush into automation for the reasons that you said maybe, but also because they see it as like the, the shiny thing that, Oh, I can, I can speed up my, my, leads coming in awesome but they haven't gone through these uh trials and tribulations what is your what's your thoughts on that man when is the right time to get into automation i think the right time like for me actually came when i actually didn't need the leads as much like you know we have business coming in and it sounds interesting to say but because i don't care as much about the quality of them I, you know if you don't put the work in the beginning, you're gonna not know how, let me, let me think about how to word this. Are we editing? Are, can we edit some of this stuff? No. <laughs> I was just going to say, don't hurt yourself, man. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I think, I think automation. So I've been messing with automation for four years. I would say everything from automatically liking stuff on Instagram to follow and follows. I've just, I find it fascinating because of what you can do with like, I just think technology is really cool and being able to do more as one person is very exciting for me because I'm very hands-on, like I'm a, I'm a hands-on builder, if you will. But what we're building is digital infrastructure. And I think that's like the coolest thing in the world because it's unlimited, you know? So Absolutely. I think if someone needs to focus, like the time when someone needs to focus on automation, should be way further down the road when they when they have figured out a lot of their systems, the procedures. Like I have a team to feed and I'm ready to take on projects on an exponential level versus me just needing to have, you know, five, six projects at once. So now that I'm at the point where I can actually take on the volume, that's where this is all coming in and I can really up the systems uh, right. to, to just generate that much more business. And then the next step is, once these systems are set up, you know, when we have 20, 30, 40 leads coming in each week, that's where I step back from the sales process. I train someone to just sell and close those leads that come in. So that's one of my next people that I'm trying to bring into the organization. It's just someone then that now the leads come in, they close the deal, they get it to my project manager, project manager sees the project all the way through to the end. And I'm just kind of jumping in at random spots being like, okay, this is the messaging. Okay. Rework this on the edit. Okay. Do this, do this, do this, you know? Right. Now, 
do you think that there are elements of the the sales person that are like like that next step that are also automatable you via video or do you think there is a a point even in 2021 where we're, we're still going to need that human touch um you can fully automate everything utilizing video yeah uh 100 will your conversions be as good as they were if you were to have a live person overcoming objections i doubt it yeah the challenge the challenge that when you make a video, say it's an uh, FAQ, and even though you overcome every objection, amazing, maybe the one that this person is, that's holding them back from making the purchase decision isn't until three minutes in and they don't watch the whole video, it's not gonna close. You know, they're just like, okay, I don't, I don't care about this. All I cared about is, is this gonna make me grow a beard? I don't know, um, <laughs> whatever it is, you know what I mean? And, and they don't get that info right away that's where live people come in. So I still think the human element is important. That being said, there's plenty of fully automated webinar funnels and all these other things that will completely sell you without ever needing to speak to an individual. And then the other thing I think is that generally it depends on the price point too. So yeah. if you're selling something in the, let's say 50 to 250 range, $250 range, it's a little bit more of an impulse buy. You know, someone might see it and say, okay, only 50 bucks, whatever. Let's see, let's see what this is about. They'll buy it and then they are throwing that money away and then it not working out. Exactly. If it's seven, eight grand, like some of the course, like that is a decision that took me personally years to come to over a year to buy that $8,000 program. But guess where I was actually sold before the sales call It's from all the videos all the videos I watched, all the reviews I watched, this individual coach and the way they were teaching and just doing everything. I was sold before the sales call, but I still got there. I asked a couple questions because there were some questions I had, you know, it's like, all right, take my money. Let's go. Yeah. And it's almost like it's the breadcrumb trail that leads you up to that, that final moment where, where you can ask those questions. Cause I feel like you can't have all bases covered Right. You can't know every single thing that's going on in someone's mind. You can handle certain objections. You can, you can provide all the value that you want, but there's going to hit a point where <clears throat> whatever is in Sieb's mind or whatever is in Dave's, Dave's mind is different from the exact, exact scenario that, you know, Joe Schmo might have going on. And it's like, you need that, that human touch that last yeah. bit, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, the other thing I think is people crave human touch in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> people are After 2020, man. Absolutely. <laughs> dude, people are tired. And, and like, cause the other thing that happened in 2020 was so many more people were coming out with videos and info and buy my course and do this. And, and Hey, here's how I'm dealing with the pandemic. What are you doing? And then almost like a confrontational way where you're like, well, I don't know. I'm like growing potatoes over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's a side note. I, I got real deep into growing the potatoes over the p- initial days of the pandemic. I uh, love it. I love the little anecdote <laughs> side story there. How, how's the farm doing? <laughs> the farm died. I, I dropped one <laughs> off the balcony and uh, <laughs> the other, I left town and came back. It wasn't good. So. Oh, well, you're doing better with video than you are farming, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Um, but that's, I think, I think the human touch is just a nice addition for me. I like to be there to, you know, I want to connect with the clients up front. I want to establish the rapport. I want to, you know, build a relationship initially in working with clients. Like I'm there for every little thing because even if it's just to chop it up with the client while my guys set up everything and whatnot, you know, for five or 10 minutes and just mess around that you, business is relationships, yeah. you know, and move like the deeper I get into this, I think this is over the four years now that I've been doing this on my own. You realize how important the relationships are because the relationships are what are going to bring you additional business where those guess what those deals typically you don't even need to sell because someone's saying, look, these guys are great. They're probably going to charge you somewhere in this range, but trust me, just do it. So they come like I've sold deals like that where 
at the end of it, like a 25 K project, they give me a deposit and then they're like, Hey, can you just like send us a video you've done? Cause we actually haven't seen anything. <laughs> and I'm like, what? This all this time I thought I needed like the most insane demo reel and all this stuff. And you real like, you realize relationships and the importance of that. So. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's, it's crazy seeing that like take, uh, take on or happen in real life. You always hear like people buy from people that they like, know, and trust. And it's become this, repeated, repeated thing. But when you finally see it happen, like I remember the first, I don't even remember the first sale that where I had that happen, where I didn't have to show any work because it's happened so frequently at this point. And that sounded like such a weird flex, but okay. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it happens so frequently that like, it depends on if you're selling in a certain way and you're, you're showing enough stuff leading up to it. That I think that's the power of video in 2021 based on everything that you're saying is like, you can give people all the opportunity to get to know you before they actually have to walk in and shake your hand. Right. So I, dude, I've met people. I'll be riding my bike. I cycle a lot. And they like, you know, I post on my stories through Instagram from time to time. I've had people roll down the window and be like, Sabes. I'm like, what, who are you? <laughs> you know? And <laughs> what I'm getting at is like, I can spend an hour or two making a quick little value video or, Hey, here's a tip or something. By the time I get it out on the channels, keep in mind, I've built the channels up over the years. I'll have three or 4,000 views by the end of the next 72 hours. So if I can get in front of even a thousand people, do you know how, then this is a video I actually want to do where it's like, I just try to call a thousand people or talk to a thousand people in the street and just like pass out a thousand business cards versus just launching one video business card, get a thousand views, perfectly show people what you do, show you in the moment, you know, directing, shooting, making epic videos, showing great B roll you filmed, et cetera. Like it's so powerful. And it's just like, so I can do that once a week and yeah. my marketing is set and I'll get thousands of views, people continuously know what we do and guess what happens when the time comes for their organization or for them or whoever that need a video there they come in next in the rotation are megan turner owner of poppy plum media and Paige burns owner of main page media megan and Paige both kick ass in their respective businesses and they co-run the video identity project which is a video creation course for business owners, marketers, entrepreneurs, and salespeople alike. In our conversation, we talked about the role that video plays in building trust between businesses and people. Here's what they had to say when I asked them one simple question. Where is video in 2021? Everywhere. Yeah, that's so broad. <laughs> like, yeah, like that, that's the answer. I'm like, is it is it it's not necessarily anywhere new from where it's been in the past, it's just more. And it's being utilized differently. It's like where it's been in the past, all of that combined, I think is coming into this year because am I dating it? If I call it, if I mention the pandemic, no, like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm asking too many questions. Are we like in it now? <laughs> I didn't know if you were just telling us this you're is just... how you're going to open it or are we opening it? <laughs> <laughs> the floodgates have opened page. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. I think, you know, video is everywhere. And I think at one point, maybe last year, I, I feel like maybe summer of last year, I said something along the lines of, you know, at some point soon, making a video, being able to to put out a video quickly is going to be as ubiquitous a skill as writing an email. Like we're there. It's happened. We're, we're there. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you can't put up a video on social media, like you're not connecting with that audience. I mean, period. Like it's not the only content you need, but if you're not engaging in video, like you're not engaging. Yeah. I think we had a time like before 2020 where you could ask a group of business owners, have you done any video at all? And most of them would probably say no. And then this year you ask and people say, oh yeah, like I go live on Facebook from time to time, or I've done videos for social. Like people are doing it now. It's no longer you're no longer in the minority if yeah. you are creating your own content. Yeah. That's uh it's almost like video is no longer just something that's nice to have. 
fair assessment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and no longer just like one kind of video either, one tier of video, because I think, you know, when, when we say we see it everywhere, we see it everywhere at a certain level, but we also see like this, like segmentation a video, right? The strata, if you will, a video where it's like, you've got DIY video that's everywhere. You've got lives that are everywhere, but then that's also like pushing up the relevance and importance of more consistent video assets as well. So like people who at one point may have said like video is a nice thing to have, or it's like the icing on the cake, or it's just pretty they're seeing now, I think that there's so many different avenues to, to video and so many kinds and levels of video that you need in a business, but it's not just one kind, right? It's not just the studio shot kind. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Yeah. There were so many times when I started my business and I would go to networking events and tell people I, you know, had a video production company And they'd be like, oh, well, that's probably like not for me. Like, I don't need like a commercial, like my business wouldn't need that. And having to explain that like video is not always a 30 second spot on like primetime television. Like that's not necessarily what it needs to be, nor is that what I do. Um, I think now it's totally, totally shifted. I've not gotten that question in quite a while. Um, Part of that is probably, you know, the way I'm framing myself now, I'm no longer just starting out, but I also think there's a greater understanding of what that actually means to be creating video for business. Yeah. You both touched on interesting points, uh, about Megan, you saying that there is a strata of types of videos. There's so much more to it than just one, uh, like pigeonholed silver bullet and Paige, what you were saying about how people, the under the general populace understanding of what video strategy is, has kind of the bar has been raised because I've seen both of those things very much at play in my own just interactions with people. Um, I mean, one of the things that we have in common between all of us is video business cards. I don't know how often either of us are doing that as a project, but like we've all sold those. And the other day I had someone message me asking about like, how much is it for a video business card a year and a half ago? Like I had to ex- forcibly explain that to everybody, get them up to speed, understanding what it is. And now it's like people are, are understanding there's more to it than just a 30 second commercial spot or, you know, a, a corporate promotion video. So what types of videos have you guys seen um, kind of sprouting up that people are looking for or being more accepting of projects, types of projects that you guys have been working on with your clients? Yeah, I think, I think there's no Megan, you go. <laughs> I feel your happen. answer because I know what you're gonna say. And I'm you gonna already say know. Thing. Everyone you already knows it. my answer. You do it. Um, I guess that's good branding on my part. Um <laughs> so I think the really exciting thing for me is that people have been more accepting of more creative strategies for video. So the example that obviously everyone who knows my work is probably gonna associate with is signature authority content, right? And it's this idea of essentially, if you were to have your own TV show, right? Um, Because the internet is, you know, way better than cable. Let's be honest right now. You probably get more reach on Facebook than you would on primetime TV sometimes, you know? So having a consistent um, message that you're putting out each week and that people can expect and that people can relate with and feel like they're getting to know you. You're building these relationships at scale. And this is a way more creative asset than I typically would have gotten permission to, to work on with clients. But I mean, we're, you know, at the time of this recording, we're in the middle of production for one of these for a dentist, right? What dentist has their own TV show, right? When you think about it that way. Um, and that's the really beautiful thing that people I think are starting to understand that, you know, it's not enough just to have a video, right? Like just the fact that it's a moving picture is not what gets the job done. It's the fact that they can relate to the person they're seeing on screen. 
that's what's really powerful there. And so I'm really excited about moving more into assets like that. I still do create video business cards because I think it's a really good um, foundational piece and it's a good way to test a relationship between you and a client to see, is this going to be a, a long-term thing where we can work together, collaborate together um, before you get into something massive. But I'm, I'm more excited about the more creative stuff. What you yeah, got, Paige? <laughs> my answer was going to be pretty much exactly the same. Um, it's something that I think we're seeing more and more of, of people realizing that they need to give things away um, and mm -hmm. give knowledge and give value. And using video to do that is the right way to do it. I think that even just six months ago, I would have conversations with people kind of, maybe they're not ready to invest in video yet, but they want some advice on what to do. And I would say, well, what are your most frequently asked questions? Or what are some things in your industry that people just don't understand? Can you just record that of yourself and pop it up there? Like it doesn't have to be a beautiful refined piece. It can, it just, it needs to get the message out there. If you're not ready to take that step, like this is something you can easily do on your own. And I would say now, I said that was probably like six months ago, but now it's like, I hear this from people, you know, I'll be in goal setting meetings with other entrepreneurs and they're like, you know, one of my goals is really to put out a lot more like quick video content where I'm sharing value and I'm educating my audience. Like people are starting to really click with it and get it and see it out there. And the more they see it, the more they want to do it for themselves. So it's definitely something that just kind of, it, it keeps going and having that consistency is key. Yeah. Um, something that I thought of when you were both talking about that consistency and putting out like your own series and your own information as um, like a dentist with a TV show. I instantly think of like any TLC show where it's, oh gosh, yeah. it's like something ridiculously niche that, that people just eat up and love because it's, there's characters built around this. Like, I mean, Dr. Pimple Popper is a show. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I enjoy watching that, <laughs> but I mean, there's, <laughs> there's so many people who love that and who would have thought 10 years ago that that would be a thing. And so it's so quickly evolving what is expected or um, accepted that people are going to watch. So what do you think has led people to all of us? Like you said, Paige, people are asking or people are saying that it's their goal to get their, their message out there through these shorter video series, this continuous social content that, that both you guys are, are helping people with. What do you think was the main type of, um, foundation that laid that, that people are now asking for that? I think part of it comes with, and this, this might sound harsher than I mean it to, but I think part of it comes with being behind the curve where it's people are seeing more of it. And therefore they want it for themselves. Like I know Megan, you and I have had this conversation. We've used this analogy where having a video is as necessary as having a website in the early two thousands. Right. But a website was this new and novel, maybe not new and novel in the early two thousands, but like they were getting there, you know, they were like still pretty clunky and they were starting to get a little bit better. Right. And so video is kind of in that, in that era or probably was a couple of years ago. Right. And now it's at this point where it is as necessary as having a website. If you can't look up someone's website, then like you, you kind of lose some trust in their business. Um, and so I think the more people are seeing it, the more that they want it. And so why is it now? I think it's just because some people are behind and I, that sounds, that sounds mean, but well, then I'm going to press it one step further. Would you say that if people, you said that if you can't find someone's website, you lose trust. Do you think we're nearing the age where if you can't find video of a business, yes. you lose trust? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And, and I'll, I'll say even I've surprised myself in recent days when I go on a business's website, even if there's photo, if it's obviously a stock photo, I immediately lose trust. If I know that's not your office and that's a picture that you're putting out there to the world and I know like that's not you, that's immediately, it feels like a lie, you yeah. know? So if you can't show the face behind the business, if you can't show your actual space, like what are you trying to hide? And I think because video is so ubiquitous, because it's so easy to create these days, I'll be honest, it's super easy. It's on your phone, you can make it. Um, I think because it's so easy, people expect it more. Right. And I would say the other piece I think that's led us to this point is this kind of influencer movement, 
right? Mm-hmm. That, that's so weird. I think for a lot of people, <laughs> especially older folks, like it's just such a weird concept that people, just random people are representing whole brands, right? And right. they're, you know, influencing, you know, in some cases, millions of dollars of sales just because they made one quick little TikTok video, you know? Um, so I think because of that, people are expecting to see people behind the brands, right? And if you can't show them that, then there becomes the question of why. Why can't you? Up to bat, we've got David Abadaka, owner of Fresh Scoop Media. My guy has an eye for the finer details in life, and that absolutely shows through in his video work. On top of his more corporate-focused work, he's been doubling down on food, beverage, and product-oriented videos. In a day and age where everybody and their mother has access to a 4K camera in their pocket with whatever smartphone they have, we talked about the importance of having video that pops and stands above uh, the same repetitive footage that you see in every single brand story type of video. To kick it off, I asked him, where is video in 2021? Mm, that's a tough one, man. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's, it's definitely evolving to a point where, you know, if you don't have it, um, shame on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, but it's just going to a place, to, but you know what? Let me answer it like this. I think it's, it's gonna, it's going to a place where it's a lot harder for creators. I think, I mean, and I think 2021 is gonna, actually going to be a point where that's going to really kind of show up and kind of what's happening because there's so much out there, right? There's so much video out there. It's, it's really trying to break through all that noise out there. Um, and I don't think, I don't think there's going to be much of a difference in, in, in an impact in 2021. Um, I just think it's really going to be a lot harder to, to get noticed. So you really have to kind of step up your game. Um, and that's what kind of video is going. It's going to be this whole new level where you really have to come um, and be smart about what you're creating and be really also creative with it. Um, that's kind of, I see where it's at right now. I don't know if that's a weird kind of way to answer it, but. No. Do, so do you think that falls more in the, on who bears the burden of that responsibility? Do you think it is the videographers and the video agencies or the people that are hiring them or maybe doing their own kind of, like uh, planning their own content. I think it's going to come a lot to the actual agencies themselves. Um, I, 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 you know, spent the last few years, I think really focused on, Hey, just getting stuff out there, no matter how it looks. But like I said, it's gone to a point where you can't really do that as much anymore as at least for me, like you can't really just be that guy who throws up a, an iPhone video anymore. I mean, there was a point where that was possible. And I think like, you know, it was, it was something that, um, that a lot of people that I know you really kind of strive by is, you know, just having really good actual content. But like I said, there's so much that you really have to find a way to stand out. And I think visually, um, I'm not seeing as much as, as many things pop anymore. Right. But the ones that do pop, you really kind of take notice of. Um, and that's where I think that video is kind of going where it's at right now. Um, is you so, really kind of have to stand out in this way. It's almost like there's going to be, you see there being like a separation more so this year where, since the barrier to entry to, to making video is so low, it's at an all time low. Anyone with a phone can make a video nowadays. There's going to be more of a separation between the people who are able to do it uh, almost like as a, as a living or make a, a career and a business out of it versus the people who are just going to flop. Fair assessment? Fair. <laughs> you, I, know that's, you, I know that's rough uh, to say, but I it's think rough. it's fair assessment. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and I think it's just because I've spent so much time in, in, in different avenues of video, not just to kind of one space, um, that, that I'm seeing these kind of trends of what's happening. Right. And like, but, and even, even I'm seeing a lot of creators themselves beginning to, to come out with new, you know, their actual, uh, trainings and stuff like that themselves. And a lot of it now is starting to, to be more geared towards, Hey, here's how I got this shot you know, where we were on this whole, whole, whole tip about, okay, you know, here's how to really make effective videos in the sense of, of, um, you know, in, in the sense of, of maybe like the, this, like scripting or how to work with a, a client. But now it's really coming back to, I think to, Hey, like, here's how we're shooting this because so many people are shooting so much cool stuff that everyone wants to reach that point. And if you're not reaching that point, I think it's going to, you're going to start to fall off because everybody now is, that's just like a new trend. Right. Right. Yeah. It's the whole thing. I'm not sure if you, if how much you follow. Um, I know like the whole Daniel Schiffer B roll thing has been huge for a while. You know how he's doing his, his scrolling and you know, yeah, his, how you're his getting that, and stuff. that perfect shot going through the, like the different. Exactly. That's piling into the frame. Yeah. Yeah. People want to be able to do that. 
yeah so that's where i think things are going like we've we've kind of not saying regressed in any way but we kind of moved away from shoot on what you have to now like no now we got to shoot some amazing looking stuff and i think that's where it's kind of headed right now so um, just from from where i'm at and, and in my space that i'm in it's definitely a big factor yeah so that's that's an interesting take man i like that because for a while we've kind of been or at least recent years we've sort of been preaching like like you said, shoot on what you got. It's more important about the message that you're getting across. Ba, 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 ba. Um, but are you are you looking at it as people have gotten up to speed on getting the messaging across, and and so now that's everyone's at a, le- a level playing field, or do you think that is just taking more of a backseat nowadays to that visual element again? No, I think it's, I think it's um, pretty much your first statement. I think a lot of people have caught up to that. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have caught up to the actual, the messaging itself, um, you know, right. And being able to, to be able to really kind of like, to really tell a story. I think there's, there's a lot of people who have really learned that aspect of it. Um, but there's not really much for me in a visual stance of how do you now grab them into your content and keep them there? Yeah. You know I, I mean? feel like storytelling is so overdone, man. It's I see everybody and their mother saying, you need to tell your story. I'm passionate about helping you tell your story. And it's like, yeah. okay, that's great. But so is everybody else. What, what are you going to do different? And if you can exactly. bring that visual pop, that flair to it, that's, that's going to set you apart. Yeah. I, I, I think that's absolutely what's going to set you apart. Um, um, you know, because I mean, if you can learn visually how to tell a story as well and capture those people, I mean, it's just a, it's just a strong thing, strong tool to have, you know, in your toolbox. And um, yeah, I mean, everywhere you look, you hear everyone speaking about brand stories and, and you see hashtag video marketer everywhere now, you know, um, even even locally for me, guys who I know who watch me and stuff, you know, that's, and, and I watch them back a little bit, um, you know, I'm seeing that and there's really it's just it's just kind of evolved into I think there's just. I know it's just a phrase that a lot of people use and don't really maybe, you know, really understand exactly what they're talking about or, or aren't able to really tell a story um, to, to a certain sense. Um, but just being able to put stuff out there, uh, uh, you know, without any, any kind of visuals, I think is really, um, yeah, it's just, it happens all the time and people are eating it up, but then they're starting to slow down and being able to really hold their attention to it. Um, so what can you do to kind of fix that? You know, and, and for me, it's really about, um, you know, I think we're in this next stage where people really got to st- st- step up their shooting skills. You know, it's just, everyone has a camera, but not everyone knows how to use it anymore. Um, you know, we all have access to it and that's the, the right thing, but there's a lot of people who aren't trained on it and, um, it shows. So yeah. just trying to figure out, you know, um, how do you kind of reach that next step? Yeah. That's, uh, I, I like that take, man, because it's, it's so we've been, we've been seeing more and more people hopping online, uh, using their phones or, or even being warming up to the idea of hiring videographers who are just, you know, they got a camera and they'll, you instantly, when you, when you're shooting on even like a DSLR or a cinema camera, um, it's going to look better than an iPhone. Like iPhones are getting close, but they look better, but just because it looks visually better doesn't mean that there is a, a, like a quality to the shot that I think that's, that's really the important thing to take from what you're saying is, quality of of picture is not quality of the shot because the shot works into a more overarching yeah. goal you know there's a theme and it's like yeah, if you absolutely. can if you can portray that accurate or if you can portray that in an interesting way then you're going to find more success using video in this year and this point forward yeah absolutely hundred percent. Exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> so right. yeah, yeah that I, mean, I understood that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know it's, it's, it's hard because I mean, and you know me, I think well enough that I, I mean, we've had a few years of, of, of having kind of a, a mindset on how things, you know, can really help you to grow what you're doing. But um, as I said, as, as I'm seeing trends and stuff like that, because it's now becoming the norm for that, that, that kind of mindset to be there. Um, it's really, how do we, how do we step out of that? You yeah. know, how do we, how do we, how do we finally just really become different? And it doesn't mean, and for me, it means to go back, get down some basics and fundamentals of actual filming, right. Of actual shooting, of actual lighting and composition and all these other things. 
um, um, that really are going to help you to elevate kind of those stories that you're trying to tell. And um, a lot of people aren't there yet, but I do see a lot of people trying to step that up. So yeah, yeah man, interesting. It'll be an interesting year, but that's just, you know, um, I've switched over from like a lot of things too, where I'm kind of strictly right now, like mostly into like Instagram, TikTok, even, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. on there. I'm not, I'm not really posting anything, but I'm seeing things. And even on there, but I'm seeing, I mean, you see everywhere, like, you know, lots of people trying to show you how to shoot yeah. certain things like on your phone, you know, how, how to get that cool look, looking shot just on your phone. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's one thing to shoot on your phone, but to know how to shoot on it properly is a whole nother thing. So yeah, yeah, man, it'll, it'll be an interesting year, but that's just, I know I'm a, I'm a little bit against the grain of a lot of people on that one, but, um, yeah, it's just what I'm in, what I'm experiencing right now. So last but not least, we've got Aaron Sawyers, owner of Checkmate Media. Aaron's really good at helping businesses be more efficient and effective by putting video into their already existing processes. The way he sees it, people can't afford to not be using video in their businesses anymore. We talk about the importance of video for one of his clients in particular, a realtor, and more importantly than that, we get into the specifics of why it works. Here's what Aaron had to say about the state of video in 2021. Yeah, I think I think video in 2021 will be no longer a nice to have. Right? I think that now that people have people have gone through the harsh of the pandemic. Um we hope so, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. But but I think I mean obviously, obviously it's not done and I don't, I don't think it's ever going to be normal quote unquote but the the harsh you know you know the 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 vast uncertainty to my in my opinion is over right you know people are settling into into what what's going on now and they're 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 living they're adapting to to the times um so i think now that Again, the harsh is over. People now are going to see video as no longer a nice to have and um, a, a necessity, something that that should be and 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 a, an asset that is an integral part of their business. Well, it's interesting because we saw at the beginning of all this, we saw a lot of people who could afford to leaning into these new marketing methods and really getting a jump on all these no things that are no longer just nice to have, you right. know, people, there were certain people that recognized earlier on that this is need to have. So right. how do you think that that split is going to play in? Because there are certain people, clients of our own who realized the importance that video brought to the table during everything going on and now there's people who are just getting onto it do you think they're way too far behind or do you think there's we're still in just the very beginning of this new age of what video can do um i think i think we're at a place where if you're if you've disregarded it if you disregarded video you don't. <laughs> um, I, I think right now it, it it becomes a place where okay, you know, the people that are using it are using it. They're seeing the great results that it's providing. They they and now they should be doubling down. They they should be using video at every single touch point of their business. Anytime that there is a anytime there's communication between you and your prospect or your customer, there should be video involved. Can you give me one example of like a project that you've worked on or something you've consulted on for one of your clients where they implemented video at a, at a really important touch point? Yeah, totally. So, so I'll bring, um, you know, one of my clients, she's a realtor. Um, and so we worked on, we, we did, we did a ton of videos with her, um, one of the videos was a video business card, and then we did testimonials with that. Now, with as a realtor, you talk to hundreds of people, um, maybe even thousands a month, right? You talk to a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> and you're bringing a lot of people into your network that don't know you, and because being a realtor, there, there's so many. It's a, it's a saturated market, right? 
um, you need you need someone to vouch for you, right? Um, if in most cases, realtors are recommended by by their neighbors, by their cousins, by by family, right? You're getting tagged on Facebook posts. Yeah. If, if I'm looking for a realtor, I'm not going on Google searching Vancouver realtors. <laughs> That's, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. I'm yeah. going to to my buddy who just sold his place and saying, "Hey, was your realtor good? What's going on with him or her?" Yep. Or I'm going to my, you know someone that I know, Hey, I, hey I'm looking for a realtor. You, you, you just sell you your house, right? Or, or yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, or, or you, you just bought your house last year, a couple of years ago, you know, give me a realtor to talk mm-hmm. to. Right. So I'm not, I'm not searching for realtors. I'm, 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 I'm being recommended a realtor. Right. So that being said, someone needs to vouch for you. So if you're, if, if you're coming from a cold relationship, those testimonial videos that we created for her were an integral piece of her sales process. So, um, real life example, she, she had a client say, Hey, you know, who are you? <laughs> like, tell me about yourself. Like what Your question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, have you, have you, you know, worked with, with, you know, this type of family for, or, you know, what have you done? And she, she referenced her testimonial videos. Hey, I have these testimonial videos that we did. Here are some of my clients that worked with the, the raving fans. And here they are, they're on our YouTube channel. Maybe check out some of our other videos. Here's also, also our video business card that tells you a little bit about me and my process is what I do. Um, so those Drop the were- whole package on them. <laughs> right, yeah. So so those are a few videos that we did for her that went in, were an integral piece of her sales process because without them, she closed the deal. <laughs> um, and, but without them, it, it might be a longer sales process or she might not have gotten the customer. Right. Right, um, right. or the prospect. So so that's that's a real life example of how you know, um, the video business card as well as testimonial videos can be an integral piece of, um, not the top of your funnel, right. But more mid, mid top, right. You know, after you speak to someone now, they need more information to make a healthier buyer's decision. Yeah. So it seems like, I mean, it not seems like for years now, people have been saying, Facebook ads is the quickest way and the most effective way to just start growing your, your audience, your customer base, your get new clients, get new leads. And I mean, you see the statistics, you can't really argue it. However, that's driving traffic, right? What you're saying is here's these assets for once people are already in the funnel, once people are already interested, forget, don't even, just forget the funnel talk. Once people know that you are, you exist and they want to know more, there seems to be a disconnect where a lot of people don't, don't have much to offer. Like they have a website, but their website's not necessarily putting in work for them. So it seems like what you're saying with putting video into these touch points is kind of building up the the defense there for once this traffic's already driving is that kind of a fair assessment yeah most definitely so um yeah no you hit it right in the nail there you know you have your offensive videos you know videos that you're sending out to people hey get to know me i'm cool look at me uh, awareness videos um and then you have the defensive videos where it's hey you already know me um that's you know let's move business along faster here's the right information you need to know to make that decision so it moves defensive videos aren't going to get you more business but they're, they're going to get you maybe better business and they're going to um they're going to move people along faster through through the sales funnel from awareness to to retention yeah People always say people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And the closest, especially nowadays, the closest that we can get to reality and these in-person meetings that we used to have is video. And so I I like that people are kind of, 
at least as of 2020, accepting that not everything needs to be an in-person meeting. And so we've naturally just by necessity started to accept video as an official means to learn about people or get information or anything like that. So I think even more nowadays, that's going to be an important thing. So, so, you know, you've got people that you've been working with that are already doing this. There's going to be people coming to you this year who are going to want that. Are you, are you ready for that massive amount of growth of people that are finally having the real come to Jesus moment? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, most definitely. And that's, you know, why I, I put out a lot of content, you know, giving them, um, yeah. you know, sparking, sparking that idea because there are a lot of people that haven't used video yet or invested in video. There are a lot of people that, you know, don't know what video can do for them. And that's, and that's, I think is a, um, is something that, that is still out there. You know, they, they see video working for other businesses, maybe even businesses in their own, in their own market, but they don't know specifically how video can work for them. You know, they, they what see do you, the, what do you say yeah. to those people? How do you kind of contextualize that for them? Well, it's a matter of, of allowing them to understand where there might be gaps in communication within their own business um, mm -hmm. and allowing them to, to see that, okay, I can be more efficient here. I don't need to take three sales meetings with this business to answer, you know, questions that, that could be told on video. Right. Yeah, in 30 I don't need to, I don't need to do a demo of my services or my product and go to their business now, spend an hour, hour and a half in front of their business doing a product demo when I can send them a video that is that product demo and then maybe do a 20 minute meeting with them to answer any specific questions they had about my product or service. So right. it's really just a matter of being efficient and saving time. And when time is money, you're basically saving money using video. <laughs> right. We're really right. getting the draw through line here, right? Right, exactly. So there it is. Five different experts, five different, but under the same umbrella opinions on not just why you should be using video in 2021, but the state of where it is now and really how to win by using it. One of my goals with this episode was to show you that winning with video doesn't just mean one thing. Whatever your goal is, whatever it is that you want to get done with your business, whether that's get more clients, get better qualified clients, or save time doing certain things, if you can get that done using video, then you're winning. At the end of the day, there's so many ways to win with video, and that's what this podcast is going to be exploring. If you were liking what today's guests had to say, be sure to go connect with them on social media because they post a lot of great stuff there too. And I'm going to include their information in the description of this episode. So go find them on your favorite platform. And I'm sure that they would tell you that they'd prefer you to connect with them on LinkedIn, which is hint, hint, another way to win with video in 2021. Everything you heard today were actually snippets of longer interviews that I did with each guest. And so those are going to be the upcoming episodes is the full interview with each person um, in their own episode. And they've got a lot of great things to say. They go deep with it. And um, there's just a lot to be learned from each person's full on perspective of more than just the current state of video in 2021. So be sure to subscribe, to follow this podcast, because those are going to be coming out, like I said, each week for the next coming weeks. And then we've got a whole nother batch of good stuff coming after that. And if you like this and we're not already connected, go add me on LinkedIn. I'm David Lisowski over there, L-I-S-O-W-S-K-I. And go follow me on Instagram at entrepreneurbra. So thanks for tuning in. Until the next one, drink lots of water, be nice to people, and keep winning with video. Thank you.